Right, so, um, hello, it's Meet Me Pie, hey! Hello, hey. hello, hello! Um, yeah, so, uh, by the way, so before we start, I would just like put the link for the notes there, down there. I'm not that accurate, it's here. <laughs> um, and if you want to follow us, uh, the news that we talk about and want to click on the link and see, you can uh, grab the notes there. And also today we have uh, Martin with us. Yay! Hey. Yeah, so uh, Martin, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, like helping out in your pipeline with us. So um, yeah, so later today we would uh, talk about you know um, we we'll talk about like uh, what's going on in your pipeline, what's his experience with your pipeline, and other stuff. So um, first of all, I think what I gotta do is that uh, I gotta go into our uh, normally usually. Um, announcements that we have so let me see if i can share the screen it's always pie difficult chat time. yes so we're going pie chat time yes let's share it and voila <laughs> um <laughs> so uh first of all i think this is quite important that uh the oh actually yeah so the core for proposal of uh pie data um global is uh, the deadline is coming soon the 2nd of august and yeah, it's going to be the first uh, Pi Data conference that go online, and I totally recommend people to submit. Uh, we have so far quite good responses, so please don't miss the deadline. Uh, you'll regret it. And um, yeah, so another thing, another thing also uh, happened. Also, the deadline is also the second. So it's um, so uh, you know, Sandrine, you know, our guest last time two weeks ago, uh, and I are running this uh, workshop for PyCon Africa, and um, yeah, we re we receive a lot of uh, application for joining the workshops, but we need more mentors to help out. So, if you have any experience uh, in Python uh, or data science, it doesn't need to be both, because um, uh, we would send out the materials to you beforehand. If you have enough experience um, in Python that you can learn the material quite quickly, then you can definitely join because uh, what we're talking here is that uh, the, the, the people joining the workshop could be someone who have never do coding before or they are students, very young students, you know, um, that, you know, they need help. So uh, please, uh, the workshop will be on the 9th of August. Uh, it will be uh, because the conference is like a West uh, African time. So it's the same time as the BST uh, in UK here. So uh, it's going to be normal time. You don't have to wake up late, you know, uh, very early or have to stay up late uh, like we try to do in your apartment. <laughs> um, so that's that. And also um, what we have is like, Oh, I remember, yeah, remember like last time we talked about PyTest 6 is coming soon and and now, yeah, it, it arrives. <laughs> and so, yeah, um, please check what's new and then maybe, you know, um, yeah, maybe you want to see if that could help you better um, in your project. Uh, another thing is Hacktoberfest. <laughs> um, Lace, have you joined Hacktoberfest before? I have not. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about it? Yeah, so Martin, do you know about Hacktoberfest? Yeah, I think you can uh, get a t-shirt if you do like a few GitHub pull requests or something. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So last year, I think it's five. So it's very easy, like any pull request to a proper uh, repository work. Um, so, but please don't spam because uh, people can report you if you're spamming there, <laughs> uh, just making, you know, a lot of PRs just to change a space or something that, you know, and without communication, I think like any any pull request is fine as long as you communicate with the maintainer and make sure that you know uh, you are really helping out. Um, it's yeah. quite a pretty website as well. Like it's a yeah. really nice one. And you can sign up for like uh, the newsletter if you want to, um, or just come back. You know, um, you know, in August, I, uh, uh, not August, uh, October, I think. So. <laughs> So which cool. one do you like more, Martin? Do you like Hacktoberfest or Oktoberfest? <laughs> oh, actually, uh, I'm in the north of Germany, so I would not go to Oktoberfest, so Hacktoberfest it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, can we have both? Like, we have, you know, go to... I, I remember last year we dragged Martin to a, 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 a traditional German place, <laughs> and then he totally don't like it. <laughs> it's it's uh, totally like... Uh, let's put it this way. If you would have, like, a Scotsman, and you would just say, let's go to an English pub. Hmm. That yeah. might work or might not. Yeah, because we, we were in Berlin and it's like why like why you choose the first because like Berlin got lots of different like 
places to yeah. eat. But like, I just decided that, well, I'm in Germany. I have to do something German. And and it was a nice evening. So I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I would probably but not place, go again soon. Yeah, it's <laughs> too crowded with uh, tourists. So it's not the best place, I yeah. would say. And if now I can... Sorry. Yeah, if you want if you want to meet Germans, that's not the place to go in Berlin. <laughs> if, if, you, if you want to meet tourists or see many Japanese people, yes, that's where you want to go, and you're gonna have a nice time. And just just imagine uh, having this great live music again. Remember these two people there playing all these famous song, the German guy with lederhosen on the drums, oh, yeah. and the one female singer, and they were just doing best of the eighties, best of the seventies. Yeah, and that's totally so German. <laughs> yeah, that's I like brilliant. And and like I I I really was like I know a lot of people would kill me like especially those living in Berlin. I really like that place at the um at the uh, Schnepfel like the airport you know at at the Sonsee. Like I really like that the, that place there. They have like uh you know their sausage and they have like you know but that's totally a tourist place. But it's at the airport you know like but I I like I, every time I I visit the airport I have to go there and have some sausage there and I would go there one hour earlier just to have food. <laughs> Um. <laughs> well, you're allowed to want that if you're visiting. That's good. Yeah, but it's just like I know that all my friends will be like, "What?" <laughs> um, so yeah, we have talked about quite a bit. Oh, I think I opened. Yeah, I double opened. I don't know what happened with the notes and stuff. I have to maybe have to double check. Um, <laughs> We're talking so... about uh, Pi Data Berlin, no? The Pi uh, Pi Data Berlin tonight, and there's also Pi Data Cambridge tonight. Yes, another meetup. Oh, and Pi, uh, Pi Berlin. Yeah, Pi Berlin tonight. I don't know why yeah. I put the wrong link there. It's Pi Berlin. Um, yeah, so if you go to Meetup, you'll find them. And uh, Pi Berlin is... Uh, I, I need to fix the note, actually. Let me see if I can find the thing. Pi Berlin Meetup. Yeah. And there you go. There you go. They have a Meetup tonight. I just saw it. Uh, so I would just... Is, is this the right one? Oh, no, this one. Summer event, is it? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's the date for today, so that could work. Yes. Yes. So it's today. It's so let me yes. the link. Yeah. The link is a bit messed up. Sorry about that. And um, because I just like quickly do it right before <laughs> the stream. So yeah, we went very quickly through the news because I know that with Martin we can talk a lot. We <laughs> chat a lot in. We chat a lot, a lot in uh, in 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 Euro Python. So I know how it goes. And so. Um, maybe first, first of all, introduce yourself. I mean, like we all know you, but uh, maybe someone... yeah, some people might not know me. So, yes. uh, well, I'm Martin. That's what you can see. Like if you look at the corner, that says my name, and I'm here doing a session from Flensburg, North Germany. That's about seven kilometers from the Danish border, and I grew up on the island Sylt, which is also close to the Danish border. So I've always been in this area. Um, I've been studying business information systems here in Flensburg, and during the time I did my studies, I uh, was grabbed by a local shipping company that was at that point doing duty-free sales, which has stopped and then, and they wanted me to work for them, and that was actually, the, it's my life, my life is full of happy surprises, that was one of them, uh, so I decided that summer I didn't want to work, they wanted somebody to work, so we agreed on two days. <laughs> and, and I went there, I worked with them, and when um, we were done with this, they just asked me to stay. And right. I, stayed, I stayed for nearly uh, 20 years full time. And wow. um, I've, in, in, since that time, this has grown from a local company to a global company. They are now doing ferry lines from Spain to Morocco. So they're doing Africa. They have uh, contracted ferry lines uh, in uh, Arabia. They have a lines in America now. Uh, we're just opening a new line from Germany to Sweden. So there, there's loads of things going on, and it grew uh, over the years. And it grew with software that um, me and some other people wrote. Like we were, at the beginning, two people. And there was a third coming in. Uh, it was like... And with the German company, it was in German. And then they bought a foreign line from Finland to Estonia. So we got a local translator I knew, and we translated the whole thing into English. And then they got the Spanish. This uh, so so it could grow 
bits by bits, and the software was getting bigger and bigger. But after 20 years, the software is no longer fit for today's needs. So in 2014, they started a new project to replace it. And in 2016, well, the new project is supposed to be in Java, and I don't do Java. So <laughs> <laughs> at some point, we, we agreed that... Uh, it would be better if I quit the full-time job, uh, kept all the old systems running, do a lot of things for them, but also do others. And that's Python. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we build a new system in Python, actually? Uh, I could, but uh, the thing is, uh, now, five years later, I'm at the start of the project, uh, I certainly couldn't because I didn't know enough. At this point, I could be doing it, but it was a decision that this is done by an external company, so they're not they are not doing this in Python. They're doing it like for a big problem uh, program if you want to do it. Maybe Java is not the best. Uh, maybe Java is, is a good selection, but it's a totally different kind of working than what I do. Because um, my job usually is people call with a specific problem and then we'll find a solution quickly without a process. So I make right. like I make like design decisions. I show to them, is that what you would like? And usually people are not that good at actually telling you what they want. Yes. So, so the one thing I learned in my job is then if you in, in any business situation come to me and say, I would like this. And uh, the first thing I would ask you, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing would be like, why do you want this? Explain. And then I, I would usually tell them, no, you don't want that. You want this because this is easier and this will solve your problem. And usually uh, uh, this kind of approach works well, well enough. So, uh, but if you have a bigger team, if you want to... Um, sell this to, we sold the program to uh, some companies but not many but if you want to scale and they want to go globally with this at some point they have to switch right. and so that's that's uh, after 20 years uh, it's still running it will run for two or th maybe longer years in some places but at some point uh, it will be turned off so i had to think of something else to do yeah, and... but uh, is it is it why you started python like when you, your job oh kind of yeah the, the, the python ago. thing was not a happy accident because you, you know you know these things the raspberry Pi. oh yes <laughs> and uh, that was in 2015 14 before i quit my job i bought one just like let's let's buy one these look cute these cost nothing let's buy one and then i had that on my kitchen table for a few days and i thought like so what i'm gonna do with this now <laughs> I googled for this and I found out, oh, people seem to write Python on this. This I had no idea of Python. I uh, looked at the code and I thought, oh, this looks reasonably easy. So yeah. I went to some online tutorials and taught myself some Python. And I quickly found out this is much better than what I have right now as my main language. <laughs> so much. <laughs> it is so much more fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I did web scraping on this. The other the, the thing is if you like if somebody's watching who wants to be new in programming, getting a Raspberry Pi makes things so much easier because you don't have to learn how to set up the thing. You mm. get the Pi, you download the image, you turn it on, and you already can begin. And everybody else has the same environment as you. So if you Google for solutions, they will work. If you are in another environment like Ubuntu and you don't know Ubuntu well, if you're on some Windows, uh, you will run into traps and you will give up because you can't fix these. And on the Pi, un un until you're getting really um, well, if, if, you, if, if you know a lot of things, of course, you will run into problems as well. But to get started with Python, you will not have such big problems. And if you ask for help, you can tell somebody, I have a Pi with this. Can you help me? And then they say, oh, I have the same Pi. Same thing, same commands will work. Uh, yeah. and that's that's what made it possible for me to learn this at home by Googling and watching some stuff uh, without visiting a Python course or, at all. So yeah. that that's how I got started with Python. And, oh. <laughs> and, the f and then one year later, I sold my first Python program. Oh. <laughs> which was a very funny story. Um, there was uh, because with with the with python you can do web requests easy you can do web yes. services you can call out things other languages and other hardware might not be able to do it so easily yeah. so uh, we had this company that was building a gate that would open and close to let cars through and they promised to include a web service with this gate 
this was at a company where I had friends. And so I came over there and asked him about the progress. And he told me, uh, well, these people didn't manage to get it to work. <laughs> it, it, it has been this has taken forever it's not and i'm i with my new python knowledge says oh i probably write this stuff in two hours <laughs> it's and like so, so of course you like bragging is fun so uh, i took like the definition down home sat down it took me eight hours to write the thing but it worked so i went there the next day we put up a second pc there we put the python script on we turned it on it was working and then we turned it off again <laughs> that was that. That was that because I didn't have a contract on nothing. And three weeks later, there was a emergency meeting when this company came to the bosses of the um, company and says, uh, "We have a problem. We will not get the web service to run. We can't do it." And so, what should we do about this? And then the head of IT said, "Well, I have got another machine there that actually does this," <laughs> uh, which was an interesting situation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they asked what they should do about it. And he just said, well, they should probably ask me and buy it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, so cool. Like... So, so I got my first Python sale from that. And from that point on, uh, I made some more smaller projects with Python um, just to, to get a taste of what I can do. And whenever I have something to offer, uh, I, I had a second one, like my biggest project. I also I programmed it on a Raspberry Pi. And I put it there and I told them, uh, you can test this on the Pi. If you like it, we'll have to find out a way you pay me. If you don't like it, it's free. Because that's that's a very good approach. And I've been doing this with um, many people, like small prototypes. I'll do something in Python. You look at it. If you don't like it, it costs nothing. But if you, li if you like it, then you have to pay me. But what if they steal your your work and like steal your idea and like put it as if it's theirs? Like yes, it's, come that, across that is, people like that, you know. That's totally Ask. possible, but in the environment where I run, run around, like uh, ship travel, uh, people are generally honest, keep their word, and I've in in like all the time I worked with anybody, I had never had anybody break their word, so. Okay. That's you don't need a written contact with the people I work with. You just tell them, okay, that's the deal. And if they say yes, that's a commitment and you can trust that. Maybe it's a German thing, but in Germany, this works. Okay, good. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I grew up in a multicultural place, so it's maybe a little bit complicated. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, yeah. So I, should we start talking about EuroPython, actually? Yeah, I know we, should, have... we, should, we, should, yeah, we should. We should talk about this, yes. Uh, yeah, because I know you have lots of interesting stories. I would love to hear more, but yeah, I think I we have to I hope so. Yeah, well, uh, EuroPython, <laughs> well, when, when, I, when I said I quit my job and I want to concentrate on Python, the obvious choice was to say, okay, this is one year I'm going to have to go to as many Python events as possible. So uh, I booked EuroPython and some other events for 216, and so that was my first one. And uh, I came over there expecting nothing. I just booked this, so I have I had my room for the week. The only thing um, that I did, I made sure that I could arrive a day early and leave a day late, so that I'm there all the time. Yeah, and the first Euro Python was super interesting. They had they had this five day format where yeah. they did uh, so including talks. the sprint or not? No, no, that's excluding sprint. So Ooh, okay. it, there's so it's, even there was like even same, more. Right? It's the so same it's, as it, what we had last year. No, it, it's not. It's more. It was more. It was uh, like, oh, like, yeah, like on Sunday. Oh, okay. Yes, on Sunday it was Beginners Day. Even before the conference, they were already opening the thing, and <laughs> the beginners were coming in and uh, doing stuff like. And then it was five full days where the training and the talks were Talk mixed together. Mixed, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that that is from the perspective of a visitor. If you bring five days, not everybody has five days, but yeah. if you bring five days to the thing, uh, you can then do like a tutorial in the morning and then do some talks in the afternoon. Uh, so it, it really it was a great way to get started. And so I did some tutorials, and I talked to so many people, and everybody <laughs> told me something different, but. Uh, I I got I got some ideas of what I should look at. So the first Euro Python was just talk to everybody who would listen to you, and there were enough chances to talk to people. And I got a, a nice overview of what Python is now, 
So this this um, when you are at home, you watch all these videos and all these talks, you get the specific knowledge you want. But the overview, and just to say it to somebody, oh, so you've been using this. Now, what do you like about it? Would you do it again? These questions you have to ask some people. And if you're starting with a language and you don't know what mistakes you sh could make, it's super good to come to Europython. Yes. And the other thing I did not know about it at that point is that it's totally volunteer organized. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was expecting a normal conference, but I got this strange holiday-like volunteer event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and... just, every time I tell people I love going to conference, they're like, what? Yeah. You know, like, what are you doing there? You just like sit at the talk and like, you know. Nope. You not nope. here. <laughs> No, 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 not like conferences are parties as well, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's super friendly. Everybody's sharing. It's not about money at all. Uh, at least people hide it very well. Uh, at other conferences, <laughs> I expect uh, like sales pitches. And yeah. to Europython, the sponsors send people who know their stuff. And yeah. that's uh, because you, you can go though, there and ask very hard questions and you get answers. And yeah. that is, that's good. So, uh, and the like the first year was getting to know loads of people, being totally overwhelmed with what everything was, or what everybody was doing, and also learning things like too late because you miss out on things if you don't know what's going on. And the the one thing I missed out on the first one was the Telegram channel, and once oh, I found, oh, and no. once I found out about that, that everybody is chatting on Telegram, yeah, uh, yeah then then I was totally sold because on Telegram uh, you get like all the information for the evenings as well. Yes, and get the people go in the evening, yes. The informal, <laughs> the informal stuff you get to know. And so that was a lot of fun. And of course, as I stayed for the sprints and even for the teardown, I, I talked to a lot of volunteers and you, you gradually get sucked into that scene. Yes. So for the, next, <laughs> for the next year, I thought like, oh yeah, sure, why not volunteer a little bit? Yeah, so you it's, started the second year that you. Yeah, I year. did. I did something in the second year, and then more in the next year. Yeah. And usually, uh, I I work too hard, but during the week I'm there on location, so I have free time. So I usually try to volunteer for stuff during the week. So this year was different, but normally yeah. it's like <laughs> normally it's like okay, uh, you need somebody to do this, and do you need somebody? Well, they always needed with all the different rooms they needed session hosts. <laughs> And I'm acceptable. Let's put it this way. It's a fun, scary I, situation. I would, I would say, like, uh, how I know Martin because, like, well, uh, last year we we hang out a lot. But like, he was my uh, room, uh, my ch session chair. Yeah. This, like we call it session chair. So like, uh, he put up uh, a, a you know a hand drawn like a uh, notice for like five yeah. minutes, like three minutes. That that's amazing. I like that drawing yeah. a lot. And and yeah. like he's a pro doing it. It's like really like really honor the work and i was like oh my god this is the best session chair i've ever and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's a, it's a fun situation to do these things and it gives it gives you a reason more to talk to more people and you learn more about it and mm -hmm. uh, that's why i quickly realized that this is something i want to do on the conference rather than just go and watch talks and then uh, maybe have some luck in the hallway to find some people and if if you if you do this for like a few years, then you know so many people in the Python world, yes. and you get <laughs> and and why would you not want that? It's, yeah, I think it's, the, at least the organizing team like we all recognize you like because every yeah. year you just come back and help out a yeah. lot and yeah, we, we just like <laughs> when will you join the organizing team actually? Oh, actually, as soon as I'm done with the uh, with the full time job of my legacy systems, when that goes away, <laughs> when that goes away, I will have more time for stuff. But uh, you know how how work is demanding, and yeah. that it's difficult to do stuff and to make commitments uh, to certain things. Then, because if you make a commitment, then you have to keep it. Yep. That's that's uh, and I and I don't take these things lightly. Like if I promise to show up, I show up. Uh, so uh, that's why I don't try. I try not to overpromise much. Yeah, that that's very good. I think it's is it a, like a because uh, it's a German culture or <laughs> it, it, the it's a German culture. Yes, you're supposed to be on time, and if you say you do something, then you do something. You better do that because you said you did it. You you would do yeah. it. It's it's a bit different in other cultures. 
Um, <laughs> although it's it's fun with Europython, actually all the volunteers are reliable. I, I cannot yeah. say that there is somebody who is not. Yeah. So that's that's not yeah. happening. But I was I saying think... like there are accidents, like you know the speaker like if, you know disappeared, and but they are all accidents. I would say yeah. like nobody like you know intentionally like take it very lighthearted. Yeah. Yeah, and that's well. Do you just remember last weekend all all the happy accidents we had? It was <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun, but. Hey, so uh, so that that is like uh, okay. Why I think everybody who is into Python and who can afford the thing, um, either get sponsored by the employer, or find a way to finance it, uh, it should come to EuroPython. Um, so it's five years now that like uh, including yeah. six years maybe. So it's, it's five years. Yeah, 16, 17, 18, 19, and now this cloudy thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, so which one is your favorite? Oh, it's really tough because every one of these was good in some other way. And I've thought about this and I could really say that uh, I can't point to a favorite one. But there's things to like about these, like Rimini, for example, uh, the beach and the sun uh, was good. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Edinburgh, of course, was awesome. So that yeah. was a good one. And Basel, I've never been there. So I then could take the train to get there. So that was good as well. Yeah, you take so the train, is it? I, I took the 10 hour train and I wrote code for like the lightning talk thing, like on the train. Oh. <laughs> so that, that was also uh, good. So it's really difficult to say like what your favorite EuroPython is because there's so much to like about these and everyone's different. Yeah. Yeah, I was I would say that I I I don't know I, like yeah if you ask me it's difficult to choose but um like comparing the the the, the one that we have this year the online one yeah. and a physical one what do you think is different and what do you think is uh is you know yeah the, the the online thing is more like uh watching stuff on YouTube. Uh, also, the volunteering takes a lot of more effort. What uh, you can, you cannot. Uh, if you watch the thing, it it looks super easy, but actually getting a streaming setup to work, uh, getting a blue screen to work, <laughs> and doing all these things when if you've never streamed live before, and I have never done this before, like a week before, uh, I I started learning these things. We did three practice sessions and I made so many fun mistakes in all of these <laughs> and without without those uh, it would not have been possible to uh, do session hosting and then of course you had these have these fun things like your webcam going black like 60 seconds before you're supposed to show your head or before the next talk and not panicking and getting these things to work is also something that um, well it's challenging it's fun and and you don't see how complicated that is uh, yeah. But it was a really good experience. And for those people who were in the late night talks, uh, like on Zoom, uh, the unofficial social thing worked really well. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it was I think fun. if a EuroPython has to be done uh, again next year in a virtual way, which I don't hope, uh, there should be more emphasis on Zoom meetings, more Zoom, maybe uh, maybe some Zoom hallways, which are always open. Yeah. And also a better list that tells you which Zooms ones have activity in them. So that you maybe have a Telegram bot where you can say EuroPython Zoom and it will give you like, okay, in these three Zooms, there are people talking about this. And also then that here are the sponsor Zooms where there is a sponsor. Because I yeah. think the sponsors may have had a bad, a bad time uh, getting people to visit by. I so much enjoyed the sponsor talk in, in the real life events, but I just managed to enter the zoom conference of the microsoft uh to say hi but i couldn't go to the other five or six sponsors and i normally would go to them and talk to each of them for mm -hmm. for a few minutes and uh, so i really hope that they got enough value out of it because they are kind of paying the show yeah. and uh yeah. so i think uh, for a future concept it would be useful to uh, f find better ways where people can connect with video and talking so yeah. and, and and of course you have to ask people who went there for the first time how they liked it because their experience might be totally different if yeah I, if, like we have lots of first timer it's like really surprised and they all love it <laughs> yeah it's good i'm a first timer yeah but you've you've been highly visible on on the zoom thing so you've <laughs> talked to all of us and <laughs> 
And I've missed talking to some people I really like because uh, we just didn't get to meet online. And I really hope that uh, next time, the next uh, chance, the meeting will be a bit better so that you meet more. So there's, but uh, there's so many conferences going around the world uh, that ha have to now experience with this. And every, content, uh, and every conference has something that works. So you have to steal the best ideas from all of these. Like, for example, the Discord thing. Discord really worked well. And yeah. the organizing of uh, all the tracks in Discord, that, uh, that thing they found here, that was something that you could just copy to next year because it worked so well. And so I hope, like, for future online events that people will find more ways of getting communication running. Yeah, so, yeah, I just, like, got uh, uh, Mac, uh, asked, like, uh, is, the, is the video is going to be uh, published? Yes, it's uh, actually now is now it's only for the attendees because we make them, because they, you know, they buy the ticket, so we kind of keep them for, like, only for them for a while. But very, very soon, I think within a month, then it will be public, and then the edited version will be also uh, public afterwards. Yeah, and those will look much better than the live stream because uh, the Zoom thing has recorded every webcam, like the presenter, uh, like the session host webcam, the slides. And on the live day, uh, there was a bit of confusing about confusion about which picture to show. So this will all be fixed in post-production. And uh, when the videos come on, it will be good enough, I guess. Yeah, so... Okay, so let's do more like casual chats because I, yeah. I said before that I really like your um your drawings. So I I know that you sketches a lot. Like like did you learn that or like well you just got the oh <laughs> there's there's the thing. Um, both my parents are really good at this. So I'm I'm super bad, but my parents are perfect. And what what I have I have well as you know this this little iPad thing, and I have the iPad uh, the Apple Pencil like first generation. And if some of you out there just want to be able to sketch, you just need one of these things. And there is a, an app called Procreate, which costs like 10 euro or something. So it's dead cheap, uh, which allows you unlimited repeat. So if you're not very good at drawing, which I'm just mediocre, but I love unlimited repeat because <laughs> I can try it as I can try it as. Uh, uh, and if at some point I like it, then I can use it. If not, on paper, you make a few mistakes. You look at this, says, this looks awful. I will yeah. never draw again. And on Procreate, you say, you click with two fingers uh, for uh, take back my last uh, drawing attempt. Like you, you did like a box. No, I don't like this. Two finger, again, two finger, again. And if you have that, that two finger alone helps you to learn to draw good enough. So... Basically, if anybody just wants to get choked to say, hey, I love your drawing, get one of these. And you <laughs> will certainly say that. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's actually awesome. Like, do you have any to show us now? Or like, because I, I no. forgot. I think I took a picture l last year, but like, obviously. No, I can't. I can't show you like, nothing at the moment. Yeah, do. Find find it on Twitter very very like you know yeah all uh, the way. I'm, yeah. in the in the uh, late night sessions in one of these I also explained sketch noting which some people I know from other events are doing and I really want to get into that to do this more often but well uh, you can't session host and sketch note at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> What is sketch noting? Sketch sketch noting is the idea of that normally when you uh, listen to a talk, after the talk is over, you forgot what you've seen, mm -hmm. and with sketch noting, you doodle along on a piece of paper or on an iPad page, and you draw like bullet points. But then you also make things like you draw boxes around them, you draw little banners. If something is important, you make like a little flashy uh, thing like that, like the BAM from the Batman comics. And it, it, you laugh about this. And But the claim is, if you do this, you will remember the talk better. And um... it's so true, because if you look at that picture later, even with the stuff, if it, if it looks bad, because my drawing is not that good, Especially no, it's, in good. This it's good enough. Well, anyway, if you look at this later, you will you will actually come back to the talk and you will remember things. And it works. It's totally worth doing. Oh. 
Yeah. And, I, and I've seen, uh, I got into this because I went to local meetups where people were sitting with their Apple pencils and their Procreate and their iPads, and they were doing these sketch notes. And I looked at them and asked them, like, how do you do this? And so after learning these three, three, four little tricks on how you can do this quickly, then I was sold. Um, so yeah. if somebody thinks like, oh, I would love to remember more stuff, sketch noting. Uh, for meetings is a good thing, and it gives you an official permission to to doodle around. So, yeah. actually, I will learn to draw better, so I can draw some clip arts for my website, for my yeah. program, and all the stuff that I created online. Because, like, I always do these open source things that, that I can't afford to hire a um a designer all the time. And my logo there, by the way, if you see it on the on the top right hand corner, there, 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 there. yeah, it's like it's mirrored. It's there. It's there. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, like that. I I hire a uh, a designer to draw it for me. So, but I would love to be able to draw it myself. Uh, of course, I I pay for the challenge, uh, but it's not cheap. And if it's an open source project, then uh, I would love to be able to draw it myself. So maybe I would try that. Maybe I'll try to set up and start practicing. Yeah. Um, so. Um, okay, so this is this is a task for you that uh, you have three minutes to defend for the Germans that you like you all can be funny because like you are very funny. <laughs> and the thing is like pe people think that oh Germans are not funny. So. Uh, actually, I, I do not know if I really want to um, make the case for the Germans to be that funny because we are living quite comfortably with the impression that we give that we are not. And well, uh, everybody in England has heard of these things. And well, let's put it this way. And you, 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 you have get this. Imp oh, is it the wrong side? No, you get the impression yeah. that the Germans are like like this, <laughs> and well, that they have no humor. And one of these things is, of course, because uh, German, uh, not many British people speak German. I looked it up, and it is like one to five percent who have know some German. So for over 95% of the population, if they would encounter real German humor, they wouldn't understand it. And loads of this gets lost in translation. So um, people who have met actual real-life Germans usually say, oh, well, that person was funnier than expected. <laughs> uh, but not, every, not everybody meets Germans all the time. So you get this image from these black and white films and from them being the baddies on television. Uh, and talking with this strange access, uh, accent, <laughs> and of course you you don't think, oh, that's 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 not funny, uh, and <laughs> so um, it it's it, it's super funny if you understand some things about the country, about the language, and uh, otherwise, well, how many how how many things in German have you watched with subtitles? I bet not much, right? So you're, you're, you've not been exposed to this at all. Yeah. But you have spent time in the UK before, right? I have spent in time in the UK, yes. I managed to get, well, the European Union is quite nice with all these programs that give you money. And uh, I got my English uh, off television and radio. So when I went over to, during my studies for half a year to the UK, uh, my English was already kind of acceptable. And it shows that I got it off comedy shows and entertainment rather than studying it properly. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is helpful. You, you, you learn other things. Like if you, if, maybe if you study Shakespeare, then you will find your true love. But if you want to make people laugh, watch comedy shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. So basically the EU sponsored this and there was a program uh, at my university where they would pay you roughly 300, no, it's in euros, it's, it's 450 a month. For six months, this money was there to, up for grabs if somebody wanted to go to the UK. And I thought like, uh, is there like a list of people who plan? No, oh, there's this money. Do you want it? And, <laughs> and then she said like, uh, nobody has claimed this. If you don't take this, then we will send this to another university and they can use it. You've got three weeks. And I thought like, oh, this is a chance. Another happy coincidence. So <laughs> a paid holiday. To, yeah, I went, well, I went to, to, to some of the professors and asked them like, do you have connections to, to England? 
and uh, asked them, like, do you know somebody? And uh, somebody knew somebody. And I got like three offers, like, okay, you can go to this place, this place, and Anglia. So Anglia Polytechnic University in Chelmsford was one of the list. And I didn't know much about any of these. So I looked at the map and said, oh, this is close to London. I should go there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went over. I went over there, uh, and uh, well, when I came, they said like, "Oh, hmm. oh, now yeah, we have no idea what to do with you." <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and the best thing was the total to, 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 to my surprises, and we have not decided how much we're going to pay you. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we agreed on a very generous thing, like I think three pounds an hour or something. So I got even more money. <laughs> <laughs> and right. and they said, oh well, there's this new thing called email. Somebody will have to write course uh, material for uh, how to do email. And so I did that for a month. And then they said, oh, we have this program where we teach people at night about stuff, and we need a teacher for the email thing. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they, so they basically placed me email. there. And I had to be like a, a teacher in English in front of people who pay for this and teach them like, oh, this is how you use email. <laughs> well, so it was it was a great half year. And yeah, so, yeah it right. sounds brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And I can also recommend like if there's a chance, like if the European community wants to give you money to go abroad, well, this money is there that you take it and it yeah. gives you a chance to just live somewhere else for a while, which yeah. everybody should be doing. Yeah, I think I really re also recommend like young people to travel a lot. I, I did that like, when I was younger. I'm lucky enough to, uh, you know, similar to you, I got some like sponsorship from the university, spent a summer in in, in London, actually, and spent a summer in, um, in Princeton University. And all of them are like amazing experience. And I think it's like thanks for that summer in, in London that I'm here, I think, part of it. So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's and it's great. great. And you cannot plan for these things. It's usually just chances that pop up and you just have to grab them and do it. Yeah. And that gives you a chance to meet other people, see other things, and then you can evaluate if that's what's going on locally is actually a good way of doing. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. that's that's basically the defending how well we got totally off the thing that Germans can be funny or not. Well that's <laughs> for you to that's for you to decide anyway. That's fine, like, cause, cause you t told me about like people would just like if you're German working in abroad, you know, like UK, and yeah. then people would just assume that you work very hard. But if you're funny, that is a bonus for them. <laughs> exactly, and you don't want it to, to to be the other one. Like, for example, the most popular language in the UK is Polish, and I don't know if the recommendation is that uh, the Polish people are funny, but I don't know the recommendation of uh, them being hardworking either. So uh, it's good to have this like per default you're hard working yeah <laughs> yeah the default is hard working you have to prove yourself wrong <laughs> that yeah. you're lazy you know <laughs> lazy not pat <laughs> um okay so uh <laughs> so i think uh, you want to tell us about you know how you listen to bbc because yeah. you, you still listen to bbc why why do you do that <laughs> uh, actually the thing is that i like the bbc and people who live in the uk sometimes don't realize what kind of a gem they have there because uh, they have a lot of tradition in doing interesting stuff. And they spend a lot of money on arts, on comedy, on, on science. Uh, and they also, because they have been doing this since forever, have still have radio entertainment. Well, in most other countries, you have news on the radio, you have nonstop music, but you don't have plays or entertainment that is listened to by people. You have maybe these hidden things, uh, but it's not that uh, something actually changes something and, and that there is listeners there. And one of the things I think it's super cool is that the BBC Radio 4 station is on long wave. And that's something that they have been there since before the Second World War. So this is long wave. This is an old technology. Uh -huh. And if you go on a flea market and you see an old radio, you see on the old radio, like the, the capitals of cities. So you will see there's a radio saying London, Berlin, Leningrad, even if you get a UK radio, because like in the 40s and 50s, people could get information via that from all over the place because long wave goes very far. And that means... Yeah. 
I can tune into BBC Radio 4 in my car and listen to that. It sounds awful, but you can listen to it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not a, a sound quality I recommend, but because you could have just opened the BBC Sounds app and listened on your yeah. phone. It would sound <laughs> much better. Yeah. Uh, I think, still think it's exciting that you can do this without internet. And that's why uh, when I'm bored, I sometimes turn, uh, tune into that. And I really enjoy uh, the BBC Monday comedy panels. They By UK time, this is at uh, 6.30. By German time, 7.30 every Monday since forever. There is a panel show on BBC for half an hour. And if you listen to these things, you learn English from them. And, and you, you get an insight into English humor. And sometimes you don't understand it, which is also nice. And you, have some, <laughs> you, have, you have something to worry about. Uh, and uh, if that's that's something I can recommend if you have the time and if you like these things. And of course, nowadays with the internet, it's always yeah. half past seven on Monday because the iPlayer has all these shows for a, a full month. Yes. So whenever you want to listen to one of these, you just click on the Radio 4 website and just select one and have a good time. Yeah, I listen to the podcast. There's only one program that I listened so uh, you know regularly before is uh, the the uh, Mark Camel's uh, movie re reviews and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I used to go to the cinema very often. I, I love spending mm -hmm. time there to just take myself away from my daily life. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, well, I'm locked at home. I'm <laughs> watching YouTube, and I I, I have to resub. Uh, I think I think I resubscribe uh, Netflix. I cancel it before. I was mm. too busy, no, no time for it. But yeah, maybe I could uh, spend more time watching movies <laughs> now. Yeah. yeah, well, if you're sitting at home all the time. And if not, well, there's classic. Uh, my, my favorite show, well, let's, before we stop this, the, my favorite show on the BBC is the Just a Minute panel game. Have you heard of that? No. Is it kind of like a whirlpool thing? It's it's <laughs> it's it's uh, just a minute. Is a game that has now Nicholas Parsons, who pre presented this, died last year. It has been going oh. on for fifty years on the radio wow. with him as host. And the idea of this is you have four comedians and they have to talk about something, a topic that they're given, for one minute without repeating, <sighs> deviating. Or what's the other one? Repetition, deviation, and well, I blank at the moment, but you'll find out. Um, hesitation is the other one. See, <laughs> and if you if you if uh, some of the speakers make a mistake, then the other panels can buzz in and say, "Oh, you made a mistake," and then take over the subject. And it's lighthearted, mm -hmm. it's funny, and it has two big advantages because it's not day topic. These things also are funny if you listen to them half a year later. And because there is no repetition, it's vocabulary building, totally. Because people have to make sure to just squeeze the English language in a way so that in one minute they don't use the same word twice. Yeah. And they, they have people like Paul Merton on the show uh, who then are, uh, who's really funny. So if you have people who like to play games and talk on this, um, then it's fun to listen to this, to try to spot the mistakes, to see if you're better than the panelist. And that's something I've been recording and then playing in the car since the 90s, because it's... And then you, if you have a long car drive, you just laugh along with these things in your car. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can really recommend that, especially if you are trying to build up your English and you don't know the current state of UK politics, because for this show, you don't need it. Right. Cool. I wish I wish I could learn a little bit of German and like try to go to a, a German comedian show to see the difference. But yes. I think it would take me a long way to learn it. <laughs> yes, it will. It will take you a long time to uh, learn enough German to uh, get a joke. Yeah. Um, that is really funny. So the best thing you can do at the moment is uh, just have people explain stuff to you. Um, and maybe ask German friends like, oh, which German things should I be watching? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do came across a, uh, a Dutch uh, comedy show when I was in um, uh, Utrecht. I was walking along and there's a comedy club there. Of course, everything is in Dutch. I was like, OK. I think there's also something in English as well. I don't know whether they like they're like, what, what language they're doing there, but uh, I, I assume it's Dutch. So, so okay, I, I won't be able to laugh. I think I'll just like never be able to understand. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, that's that's uh, if you're a foreigner, that's going to happen to you. And at some time, at some point, you yep. just have to take the risk and go there and see if it gives you something. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, okay.
So uh, yeah, we we have like ten minutes left. Shall we uh, go to the PyPI highlight? So uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think um, we're we're totally done with this part, but that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, you nailed the interview, by the way. You nailed. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's plus. amazing. Like we we love to. Uh, I think maybe we need to have you back sometime so we, you can chat more about other things that is also interesting. But yeah. uh, this is what Lace would recommend to us. So what's that? Yes. So for the college, if you click on the other link on uh, the same on the oh. same thing, yes. So um, our yes. Oh yes, it's us. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so one of our lovely volunteers, Paolo. Uh, to end the to end EuropeCon, he used this photo collage, this library to make this lovely picture with most of the volunteers that were around that had their faces on a camera and they showed up uh, to help with EuropeCon. So I decided that nothing better than to show this picture and to show the library that he used to do it. Uh, right. So yeah. That's photo collage, and it seems oh, quite easy nice. to use it. Yeah, there's a very simple uh, description there. It seems quite easy to use it. Uh, the link is on the GitHub repo, and it's basically it basically makes a pool of images. So you just show the images there, and it makes a random selection. You can just um, reshuffle them, and you make different boards. It's it's quite interesting. So uh, cool. if you like our Euro Python collage. There is the there is the library that was used to make it. <laughs> right, that's cool. And uh, mine is that uh, it would be the uh, off lip. So it's not as exciting. It's just like <laughs> recently, recently at the at, at, at my work, you know, uh, we are encountering like how to do this like off o uh, authentication in Python. And because like it's super complicated. Anybody who have like come across off o know that you know you send you get a secret and then you send send it. You know, to the surface, and then you get another token, and then you have to communicate. It's like super complicated. And um, so, well, someone tried to make our life easier. We have this like off library. I think this is the official one because uh, off O's website kind of um, also you know featured them. So I am still I just encounter it. I still need to spend time reading it and see how we're gonna use it. But I it seems that if I use this, it's much easier than you know um, trying to figure it out myself. So <laughs> yeah. So if you, you experience, like, please get in touch and uh, give me some tips <laughs> if you have any. Um, so anything? Mar that, Martin, yeah, what's your Martin, what's your yes, library? I can, library? I can also uh, recommend, can you please just Google for uh, something that you can show it on the screen at the same time? Uh, oh, uh, so okay. I'll, I'll, uh, just Python Google for, uh, yeah, just uh, Google for Glom, end of word Python, G-L-O-M. G-L-O-M. Glom. And, glom. And, and then space and Python, so okay. be, that you get the right Glom. And that's the one. Can you just click on the first link? Yes. So this this is something that I've shown. Uh, it's not mine. It's from uh, Mahout Hashemi. And it is something that is my favorite library this year. Um, and it's getting better all the time. This is uh, done. Um, if this solves one problem. You have nested data, like data you get from an API, which has a complicated uh, JSON, and mm -hmm. you want to get the data out of this in Python. Usually, it's super complicated to do this because you have to say, oh, this is the main dictionary, and this is a dictionary of dictionaries, and then you will have to write code that uh, just transfers this manually into your data types. And when this then fails because you made a mistake, you get strange errors. And GLOM uh, helps you to uh, define a query instead. So you query your JSON that comes in with the query spec, and out comes the result that you want. And if it doesn't come out, it will give you a proper error message telling you why it has not worked. It has a, a five-minute tutorial which has been um, extended to a 10-minute tutorial by now, right. <laughs> which uh, uh, shows you a little bit of how to just get planetary data out of some examples. And if you are working with JSON data and you have the problem to get that into your own Python programs, uh, you owe it to yourself to do this tutorial because it uh, might speed up uh, the way you interact with JSON a lot. 
and so yeah, it works like JavaScript style, right? I can see like you can dot it, you know, like uh, you know, uh, planets dot system, you know, things like uh, uh, sorry, yeah, system dot planets and things yeah, like this, that. Yeah, this, right? this is how would normally the JSON that comes in from an API would yeah. look like. And now you you at the at, it shows you in that like okay what's what's the specification and so you have a spec like okay I want all the planets and I want from all the planets I just want the names of the moons and you can do this yeah so you can do and, yeah. yeah and it's it's just something to take an afternoon it comes with all the examples you can test it out. Um, I did one talk in German on this, and there's uh, a Jupyter notebook with all the uh, uh, examples in German language in my GitHub. And I've already been bothered that I should translate this into English. So uh, it looks like now I have to do it. <laughs> so I will probably upload this in the next weeks uh, with yeah. English translation so that you can just download the Jupyter notebook and test all of Blom's features in one notebook. And it yeah. it has saved me so much time that I'm actively spreading this to everybody who would listen to me talking about this. I think this is super useful because, like, uh, yeah. you know, Terminus DB client backend that actually, like, we we have well, well, because like the raw, like, we have to, you know, communicate um, with JSON to the backend, right? So we do a lot of this this kind of things to, um, yep. and then you know, and then the things like uh, in JavaScript, you can just like use the dot to transfer it, but like in Python, you have to do a square bracket and things. And sometimes yeah. it feels like undefined in JavaScript, but that like, you would get a error saying like it's non-type or something. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah. This, this language also has the option that you, for example, can say, oh, if this bit is missing, try that bit instead. And if that bit is missing, please put this default value there. So you have loads of ideas of how to transform data. And uh, this is especially nice if you're doing PyTests, because if you have an API, you want to check your API output, and you don't want to spend hours programming something that then checks your output again. And so you could just do a glom spec on your output and use that to validate. So right. it's it's look at it. It's it's free. It's good. <laughs> it was <worth laughs> yeah. time. I think it's it's great. I think I would have a look and see if uh, I, we could uh, help. You know, if we do another rewrite, then maybe we can use it to help us out. So um, I think that's all the time that we have for today. And thank you so much for Martin joining us. Like we all love to chat with you. <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Like, obviously, we'll see you um, in in next year's Euro Python and um, in Dublin. In Dublin, in, there's nothing to think Hopefully, online. in Dublin. No, I want. Dublin. Uh, it would have been my first visit to Ireland. I really want to go. So, yeah. I hope I to see a, you there. I we have, have an entire section. I have an entire section of the website on entertainment already made for oh, everyone good. to come and visit us. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And but, I'm, also, uh, I'm also making pull requests to Jason's uh, word peril thing. So I want to make it multi-language so that I can use it here. <laughs> great, great. Good stuff, good stuff. So yeah. You could, I could make the Portuguese version of that for PyJamas. That would be yes, interesting uh, if, as well. If, if, if you should yeah. watch the repository. And yes, you could do a translation because I, I actually want to use that thing as a an example toy project to do internalization on this and to make yeah. sure that everything works in German and English. And then you would just have to take the translation file and say, oh, I'll, I'll make it Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, how, many, how, ma how many special strange characters are there in Portuguese? In German, there's four extra characters. How many extra do you have? So we have the C <laughs> with the thing on the bottom. Then we have all the tudes. That's it. How many? Four? Less than four or less? No more, I think. So we have the accents, the tilde. Yes. Do they count as special ones? I don't or know. No? Maybe if if you for the game would discount them, then it would work because you only have, at the moment in the design have twenty four spaces. Oh, or like oh no, I think like thirty for mm -hmm. thirty spaces. So I could do four extra characters. German just matches his design. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> you need to redesign the board. <laughs> But uh, yeah, but like uh, we we could have that in uh, in the community track in pajamas, and we could play the game. Uh, when's when's pajamas? The uh, 5th of December. Oh, good. 
Yeah. <laughs> you have to join our uh, server, so you are also an organizer now. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I already I already found uh, myself in, in hijacked into the. Uh, I think no, it's not hijacked. Uh, Chang Shanghai, I think, is the word. <laughs> you know where you cl where you club people with a club, and then you wake up on a boat, and they say you work here now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's what oh, yeah. with everyone yeah. in pajamas. Yeah, if you click on the Discord server, that's it. You're Shanghai in it. I, I, I have uh, warned people, but yeah, like uh, you can help us to organize this if you want to. Yeah, that. sure. And yeah. Uh, I already, well, you follow the Twitter thing. I already yesterday uh, kind of um, applied for Judicon. <laughs> Oh yes, yes. Have, you, have you followed the funny Have you followed that? Yeah, I have, I have, I have. A, I've submitted a talk. Okay. <laughs> I've submitted anyway. a talk about how two D two K is affecting the uh, Python ecosystem. You should have. You should have. Um, have you had them on the show already? Uh, I think yeah. I think I'm, I'm ready to give that talk if uh, if I it, make it to Judicon. <laughs> if 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 not, then he, he definitely needs to be on your on your afternoon tea. <laughs> I'm not following. What's what's Oh yeah, Judy, Judy, Judy Con. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh my God, Judy. I'm going to do it now. Okay, this is the last thing that we show, and then we'll end the program. Yeah, Sorry then, about then that. We'll, yes. we'll, this, this is we'll, not we'll, an we'll, insider joke. We'll cut this, this out at some point. I'll leave it on. <laughs> leave it in. Yeah, it's actually on Twitter. It's not an insider joke. I actually, oh yeah, this 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 tweet, right? Yes. Well, there okay, is insider jokes on Twitter, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well. Are we sharing? Okay. Are you? You leave me. Okay, yeah, cool. So, See, that's uh, the that's the tweet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm. So, what is gonna be your trick? This one. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yep. And there's there's yep. me. Oh, by the way, for those people who always wanted to know why why the blue thing, it's uh, this guy here. So um, that that's my Twitter thing, and I think now I'm stuck with it. So we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think we should all go back to work. It's too much yes. fun. I don't want. Yes. To, I think. We have to, so, um... <laughs> I, I think your lunch break is over by now. So see yes. you soon yeah. uh, at some other Python event. Bye. bye. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. See you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>